Hi, I'm Judy Deepouse from Rockford, Michigan, co-owner of a Design Team Distinctive Brush Strokes. I'm here to discuss the liners of Lowell Cornell. They come in three different sizes and very long script liner for nice fine line work, the regular liner series, and a mid-length. Now, various girls find that they are drawn to one series and really like to use one. I find that all three have their purposes and their uses. But practice with them and you'll find the one that you like the best. I'm going to begin with some general instructions for working with liner brushes. This will work no matter what length of a liner you're using. You thin your paint down with a little bit of water just to get it to a nice inky consistency and roll the brush into the paint so that you can load the whole brush and have a nice control. Think of your brush as the sharpest pencil that you have ever sharpened. Remember back in school when you had a nice point on your pencil. If you pressed down on that pencil too much, you broke off the point and then it was very difficult to write with. So use your liner brush as the sharpest pencil you've ever sharpened and just stay up on the tip and you can do nice fine lines. We work with furniture a lot and we do a lot of striping on furniture. So one of the tips on striping is never look at the tip of your brush but always look ahead of your brush. That way you know when the next curve of the furniture is coming or the next little trim design that you have to follow. When you're working with striping, often you're going to use the pinky of your hand to do to rest on and that gives you the control and you're going to pull toward yourself to control your brush. If it's difficult for you to actually be resting on your pinky, you could actually use your other hand as a support and come and pull the lines toward yourself. Line work is used in so many areas of decorative painting. If you're doing scroll work, you can enhance your scrolls by doing fine lines over the scrolls to develop them, to add more detail to them by pulling and curling and staying up on the tip of the brush. You can do a lot of strokes. Also, you can do fillers. No matter what size brush you're using, you can add the filler details to your design of whatever you're working on. Some of the other things that we like to do with liners is actually filling in when you're doing floral work. You may decide you want to do um, finish out the floral work and by doing it with liners you can actually add a lot of detail to your floral work. Adding your veins into your leaves, you could do a little bit of outlining on your leaves to give it some unique detail little veins to your filler flowers, the extra little tendrils. You can do all kinds of things with your liner work and pulling out extra little tendrils. With the same liner you can pull little filler leaves or fern leaves to your design. The liner is using any other lanes. I'm going to move to it, the mid length liner and using some you can actually, just staying up on the tip of that brush, do nice fine little lines and do a lovely little freehand wreath. Again, the same techniques of staying up on the tip of the brush, pulling it towards yourself, getting a little loose, and you can do some nice detail. And again with the liner, adding a few little detail leaves into it. Plaids are some of the fun trims that we do on our, a lot of our pieces. And the little tips on doing plaids is to always stay, start with doing the shortest lines. However the plaid is going around your piece, start doing the shortest ones because they're the easiest ones to do. And then when you have to do the longer lines, you can start at one line and actually go right to the next. And if you have to stop, you have a stopping place and then you can continue on your long lines. So that's just another little tip and technique. Lettering is a big thing that we are adding to decorative painting at this point. A lot of the designs have verbiage put into them. And using the liners, load it again nicely, and just do nice strokes for your lettering.
and you can get a lot of nice detail added to your decorative painting. A lot of girls struggle because they're looking at the letters and not concentrating so much on the strokes. That often we will tell them is to turn your piece upside down and look at the letters only as strokes, not as letters. And you may get a nicer flow to your piece that way. You're not going to concentrate so much on what the letter is, but you're just seeing each of the strokes that you need to complete with your line or brush. My favorite liner I have, so I can't complete a demonstration of liners without going to the 7350 number 6. Technically it is a liner and can do very fine line work. If you're staying up on that tip, you can do all kinds of fine little lines but it makes a wonderful stroke brush. And you can go from doing some very large strokes by applying the pressure to it, and just by the change in pressure, you can go down and do a tiny little stroke with the same brush. It makes, it's probably, if I had to choose one brush, this would be the brush I would choose, the 7350 number six. It's my favorite brush. I've never had a bad one. It always performs for me. It always stays together and it works beautifully. I hope you have enjoyed the little demonstration and the techniques and tips I've given you on liners. Please look at the Lowell Cornell website for more tips on a variety of brushes. Enjoy painting.